Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Palkesh. Uh, I'm one of the technical product owners for Observe. So what is Observe? ITRS Observe is our observability platform for data storage and analytics. By conveniently centralizing your critical monitoring data and making that data readily accessible to users as well as other applications, Observe provides a cutting edge end-to-end -end monitoring solution from data collection and aggregation, analytics to visualization. Um, it, it, it's a fully API-based, highly scalable platform based on Kubernetes. And you can see in this diagram that it sits next to Geneas and it ingests data from Geneas. So what does Observe do? Um, there are several things that Observe does today, uh, which are captured by these screenshots on the right from intelligent storage and dynamic dashboarding to alert correlation and log investigation. We also have a fully certified Grafana data source, which is available to both our Grafana on-prem and cloud customers. So as I mentioned earlier, just right now, uh, today we are gonna focus on the alerting app within Observe. So I'll start with the demo now. All right. Um, so this is the system overview application within Observe. You can see a lot of different color chips um, on your screen. So these, these chips represent entities. An entity in the context of Observe is an emitter of observable data. And the concept of entities is foundational to Observe. So this view um, within the system overview application essentially uh, immediately provides me with a high level overview of my state by telling me the current state of my system. But let's say I wanna investigate the historical issues and wh where these issues come from. So for that, we need to go to the alerting app within Observe. But before that, I just wanna point your attention to the other applications that we have within Observe. So we have dashboards and explore, which help you with the visualization and charting of your data. And we also have logs to help with log investigation. All right, let's go to alerting app. So this view in the alerting app shows me the historical list of all my open and closed issues in the system. If I wanna see more issues, I can click on the show more button here, which loads up more issues. We can see that here, in the filter box, we have the root entity filter applied by default. Root entity with an observe is essentially managed entity in Geneas. So all the items here have a hierarchy of probe and managed entity similar to how it is within Geneas. And uh, Loki finished his presentation by mentioning the event occur in Geneas. So what we have tried to do with this alerting app in observe is essentially uh, provide a new way to look at the at the Geneos event ticker. The, the event ticker is a list of events, but with the alerting app in Observe, we are providing context to those events. And not only that, we are bringing all these events together within one view, as you can see on your screen. One point to note here is that events in Geneos are called signals in Observe, a terminology which I'll use later as well. Okay, um, so it's great that I can see uh, this historical list of all the alerts across my state, but I wanna be able to organize my view in such a way that I only see the alerts that are relevant to me. So we have this group by feature here, which does exactly that. So let's say I wanna organize my alerts by region. I can just type region here. Right. So we can see that my alerts are now organized by the dimension of region, which in this case is uh, EMEA only. I can further organize my alerts. So uh, let's say I wanna organize by city uh, and then by office. Uh, well, we can see here that we have EMEA region and we have two cities within the region and I can organize by office uh, as well. But uh, before that, uh, I wanna point your attention to the fact that we have uh, autocomplete functionality within group by, meaning that thousands of attributes and dimensions from all entities across your estate are made readily available to you um, so that you can organize your views in whichever way you want. 
essentially giving you a lot of flexibility. Right. So now my view is organized uh, by region and then city and then office. Uh, I can also move these chips around here. Um, and doing that changes the view underneath. I can put city here. So that also provides users with the ability to uh, look at the look at the alerts in the view that they are sort of most comfortable with. All right, change it back to this. So I've got this uh, view of alerts now um, organized by region, city, and office. On the right hand side, we have more information. Um, this is the severity view. So we have two additional pieces of information. First is the severity KPIs, which tell me the number of triggered events at each level of grouping. So we have that information at the lower level and then at the higher level and at the top level. And we also have the severity timelines here, um, which is a time bucketed view of severities where the severity levels are propagated up to derive the group severity at the highest level. Uh, these are essentially so running service level indicators. So we can now see with the with the group by feature um, how it helps you and uh, our users uh, organize their organize their alerts in the way they want to. But what if I want to further reduce the noise on my screen? Right. For that, we have got this filter box here, um, essentially uh, providing more sort of firepower or to the users to focus only on the information that is relevant to them. So let's say I only want to look at the uh, at the Windows uh, alerts at, at the alerts from Windows boxes in my system. So I can just type component and just select Windows. Um, and now I'm only seeing information on my screen, um, which was with only those alerts which are generated from those Windows boxes. Right. Um, so we have got this information now, what we want to look at. I want to investigate further um, on these severity KPIs and on these severity timelines, um, essentially try to understand what has triggered them. So let's open this up. We can increase the time window as well up top here. We can remove the filter anytime we want. Right, okay, so let's open this up. All right. So, I mean, you can see there is a lot of lot of noise on the screen right now, a lot of information within this, uh, within this sort of at the bottom part of the screen. So what does it represent? All the triggered metrics here um, from different plugins and samplers and data views under this managed entity, they're all combined together to form this view. Here you can also visually see the uh, aggregation of severities. So all these severities are aggregated up from the lower level to the higher level to form the entity severity timeline at the top. Another way to think about it is that a parent entity inherits the maximum severity of its children. Right, so now I can see these different alerts for this managed entity. Um, and I wanna figure out whether these alerts are correlated or not. So I can dig into the specific metrics. So let's say I open this metric up and I click on this. We also have the um, expand view. So the view will now be expanded. All right, so what what is this information on the screen? So this view now shows me all the signals that are contributing to this alert. So it shows me the changes to the severity status here on the left-hand side and the charting of the metric value on the right-hand side. Users can uh, navigate through this list. So this list is in chronological order. They can navigate through this um, and they can identify the specific Genios rules which were triggered. So in this case, the Genios rule was global process instance count two, and they can identify the specific points in time at which these rules were triggered, which led to these alerts. Additionally, um, as users navigate through this list, if you look on, on, on the right, 
you will see these lines appearing. They essentially help our users identify the severity transitions associated with a particular signal. So you can see a line appearing on December 1. You will see a line appearing again on the November 28th. So it's, it's, it's helpful for our users to visually see where this um, metric was triggered at what point. We have also implemented several config options within this application. So for instance, um, I can click on the share button. I can just copy this URL and I can send this URL to my teammates or to people in other teams so that they can do further investigation. They can dig further into this alert and the likely causes of it. We also have this time picker window at the top, as I mentioned before. So right now we are looking at data from the past five days. Um, we can increase the interval to let's say the past week. Now the view is gonna update itself. And you will see the charts update as well. Okay. So what this allows us to do is allow, it allows us to zoom out and figure out whether there are any patterns, any trends in the underlying data, whether these um, alerts might be correlated. So in this case, uh, we can see that the they are likely not gonna be correlated. Um, they, they, they are triggered by different Genios rules and their charting does appear to be different from each other. So this is uh, what we have with the alerting app uh, right now in Observe. We are working hard on our next release, which will focus on the KPI view of signals in your estate. And that will include several KPIs and a cross-filtering overview landing page to quickly help you identify areas of noise in your system and work on eliminating them.